game publishers learn from Las Vegas how to trick our brands to separate in-game purchases from their monetary value. And then they target kids, teens, and young adults who have the lowest impulse control to try and maximize their profits. There are some ways we as parents can combat targeting our kids and our families, but to effectively teach our kids, we have to know how Vegas and the video game industry attack our wallets. Microtransactions are found in most popular video games today. They're so successful at generating profits, they have funded free-to-play games like League of Legends, Fortnite, and Apex Legends. But microtransactions are also found in full-price titles such as Madden, Football Club, Call of Duty, as well as mobile games like Clash of Clans and Galaxy of Heroes. When we go to a casino, we're expecting to spend money. We have a good time, maybe even walk away as a winner. The casino knows we want to be entertained and we're susceptible to spending more and more money, more so than we intended to. So it feels like a carnival inside. It's loud, big signs, flashing lights, complicated routes that take us past tons of opportunities to spend more and more money. And when we load into modern video games, it's much the same with bright and flashy introductions, vivid colors with energetic music, leading into menus with pop-ups and notifications of the newest item for sale, but only available for the next week. Buy now or miss out. Yep, a little bit of FOMO added on to these other tactics for microtransactions. These can be simple, such as purchases for items you know exactly what you're going to get, such as new wallpapers, characters, skins, items, or other in-game brand new vehicles. And there are huge differences in price range, from $1 up to $99 for a single item. Going to the casinos, we have to buy in, put real money on the table, and announce what we are willing to risk in order to potentially gain something back. In return, we get chips, not real money. They're all the same size and weight, but different colors to announce their values. Why? Because it's a lot easier for our brains to toss a couple of chips into the pot instead of a couple of 20s, 50s, or more. Video games are designed the same way. Sure, some of them have direct cash sales, but often they have in-game currency that is purchased with real money and then all transactions in-game are done with that. It removes the monetary value from the item by adding in that chip or that currency. But in game, it's taken to a whole extra level, pun intended. See, while at a casino, we can cash out, either with our winnings or before we lose everything. Otherwise, people would avoid a casino that they couldn't get their money out of. Video games are more like a store gift card you get for your birthday. The store already has the money, they give you a credit instead. It can't be spent at anybody else's store, it also has no value except in that one particular store. Publishers have taken the same principle that once the in-game currency is paid for, that money is now theirs and there's no cashing out. But there are a bunch of digital goods for sale, all replicable at the push of a button. So now we have a gift card at a casino that we can't cash out from? That doesn't make sense for us, but a lot of sense for the game publishers. The gaming industry has been expanding and quickly, it'll potentially top $200 billion in 2023 with as much as 30% coming from microtransactions. That's up to $60 billion. We look at Activision Blizzard, the producers of World of Warcraft and the Call of Duty franchise and Electronic Arts, EA, the producers of FIFA, now Football Club, and Madden, and the notorious 2017 disaster of Star Wars Battlefront II. It had overtly aggressive pay-to-win loot boxes. I want to explain before we go any further. Loot boxes are a type of microtransaction where an incredibly rare item is advertised, but its drop rate or chance to receive it is less than 0.1%. But there are more items available in the pack with an inverse probability to open based on how rare they are. Again, all digital items that can be created with a click of a button. These are predatory towards everyone who opens them but were put into a game rated T for teens or E for everyone. A 2021 study by the University of Plymouth and the University of Wolverhampton found loot boxes to be structurally and psychologically akin to gambling. These same loot boxes have been rebranded in games like Madden and Football Club in their ultimate team game modes, and those games are rated E for everyone. But EA likes to call them surprise mechanics instead of gambling. And the data supports that developers and publishers know that kids and young adults are the target demographic for spending money in game. That's no surprise based on 
that still developing impulse control for teens and young adults and confirmed by Gambit, a microtransaction provider, all the way back in 2009. 14 and 15 year olds were 21% of all microtransactions. 16 and 17 year olds were 27. 18 and 19 year olds were another 21. And then your 20 to 29 year olds were 22.5 for whopping 91.5% of all transactions. And that was only a tiny percentage of the players that had the means to pay online. Now it's even easier. And because of how much microtransactions are being pushed and normalized, more players are getting comfortable spending small to medium amounts in game. This means that revenue has increased substantially. 2022's annual release of Call of Duty topped $800 million on its opening weekend, and it has microtransactions to boot. Activision Blizzard made a reported $5.38 billion for microtransactions in 2022. EA made $3.9 billion for microtransactions, or over 50% of the revenue was from microtransactions. I'm not even going into mobile gaming, which is the most accessible gaming platform and the easiest to spend money on. In 2022, the gaming industry was estimated at over $347 billion worldwide, with a staggering $248 billion coming from the mobile gaming market, and it's still growing. What I'm saying is there's no financial reason for publishers to not incentivize pushing microtransactions, just like casinos have no reason to not stack the deck in their favor. So how do we, as parents and gamers, fight back against this targeting? Well, there's two main routes. Government legislation and active parenting of online behavior, banning microtransactions in games rated E, E10, T for teen might be hard and maybe even counterproductive in the teen games, but banning loot boxes, AKA gambling, should be a no brainer. In the meantime, active parenting is crucial. Think of it like this. Every time the ice cream truck starts playing its music in the neighborhood, the kids want to spend all of their money on ice cream. The pop-up ads that push players to in-game store and other incentives like FOMO that publishers put in games to push microtransaction sales are the same thing and will continue to be in our kids' futures. Pushy companies will continue to buy ad space in gaming on the internet or in the physical world with billboards, commercials, and even sports jerseys. We can take the loud sounds, the bright and flashy lights and signs and start presenting them as a learning opportunity. Can we look past the advertisement for the actual product? Is there a cheaper alternative that does the same job just as well? Would we rather save up our money for something even better in the future? either in the real world or in the game, sometimes our kids will insist on an in-game item purchase and we can use it as a teachable moment. We, as parents, will be right and the money will be wasted or they'll move on to a new game and never see that epic character skin again. But sometimes our kids will be right and get weeks or months worth of enjoyment out of an item. But even the most engaged parent needs a cheat code in their corner to help control spending and playtime. We can't always be there. Inevitably, someone else will need our attention and getting $500 worth of microtransactions in two minutes or less is less than ideal. And that's why I recommend this video right here to better understand what parental controls are and how they can save us both time and money as a parent in a video gaming household. I didn't put any jokes in this time, so hit that like button and tell me one in the comments. Subscribe if you want more tips and strategies to set your family up for gaming success. I'm Wes, and I'll see you next time. Do good, play hard, game on.